Hello, hello. Today is a unique speed lab. Someone actually requested for me to be a waifu, Katarin. Unique one. The full crush down forward four. But I think this is gonna be useful for literally everyone because I'm gonna be discussing Zafina and the, we all know how annoying Zafina can be, how popular. Well, she's not that popular, but she is very strong and whenever you, you know, fight against her, it will be helpful. So yeah, let's discuss this matchup and Zaf Zafina in general. So, Zafina. Uh, what's, what's my Discord? Oh, my Discord is, if you type exclamation mark coaching, my Discord will pop up there as well. I don't actually remember my Discord. But yeah, so let's talk about Zafina. So down forward one, this is her go-to. Her go-to move. This move, you'll see this at least like 20 times a match. Not a match, a round, my bad. So this move, one of her best moves, down forward one. So normally, it used to be way better than this, by the way. You should uh, thank the nerfs that it's worse. Even though she's this good, it used to be better, right? So down forward one tracks really well. Even though I'm playing a waifu, this is not that easy to step. Like, step blocking does not work against this. You have to literally sidewalk like that. And it won't work if you sidewalk to the right. And sidestep block left doesn't work either. You have to fully sidewalk and commit to it, right? And I don't know, punish it however you want. And um, Katarina's 2-2 is a pretty good punisher there. But be careful of extensions. So since we're talking about down forward 1, it's being like the main move of Safina players. It's the extensions that make it so good. Normally down forward 1 is minus 5. And of course you can just press into it. And just check her. But the reason a lot of people don't do that, even though it's minus 5, is because of these extensions. Like this one, for example, right? Because you try to press something, you get hit, counter, into minus 12, you don't want this. That's why people either duck, or just stand still and don't do anything. But if that's high, why stand still, right? Why don't always just fuzzy duck and go with that? Well, that's because of the other extensions. But before I go to the other extension, I have to mention this. Whenever you do sidestep this, you have to be careful of the second hit. It tracks really well if you sidewalk and block like that. Like this. But if you sidewalk enough, of course this will also win. So it's it's pretty good. So something like this, 2-2. Two, two. Or if you're fast enough to punish just the down forward one, that's like a perfect situation. Right? But it's gonna be hard, that's not easy. But if something like this happens, you know, you get a combo, all that shit. Whatever. But let's talk about the other extensions, of why, why you shouldn't be ducking this all the time, right? It's the mid extension, this one right here. So just like the... A high, this actually tracks really well. I think this tracks way better than the high does. Yeah, unless you fully commit to a sidewalk, you won't be able to step it. If you stop midway, like that, it just tracks it. Damn, this actually has much better tracking. And of course you won't be able to size it to the right anyway. And this is the natural combo. This and this. Although it is punishable, it is minus 12. It said 13, but... Basically treat it like it's minus 12 because it can become minus 12. But... We have another extension. We have to remember this. If you try to punish this... There's a third extension. Which will hit you... And that hurts on counter hit. I think this is guaranteed after that, and that's like 40 damage. Let me try it. Yep, 42 damage. So, yeah, be very careful. And that last hit, of course it's punishable as well. But it's also minus 13, just like the second one. So 2-2 two, two punish that as well. Like that. But, you can't sidestep it or do anything about this. If the Zafina player just throws it out, you can't do anything about this. The one um, exception is that if they delay it a lot, you can actually step it, but only one direction. It tracks to this side, and you can step it to the left side. But this only works if they delay it. 
Otherwise, you won't be able to step in. Yikes. My combos are not, not on point. So yeah, that's why down forward 1 is so strong. There's a lot of mind games. And if you decide to press after down forward 1, which is decent, right? You have to play the mind game sometimes. It's not that bad. And you get countered by that. There we go. This is all guaranteed. And that's why people usually respect the down forward 1 a lot. Because this second and counter hit, this is all guaranteed. I think if they delay it, it's still guaranteed. Let me try it. Yep. They can confirm it, delay it, and it's still guaranteed. So be very careful when it comes to this string. Down forward one in general. And this is basically a punish mix up. There's no option selecting this. So you have to either punish down forward one two, or wait for this and punish that. Or maybe step it if they like delaying it a lot. And most good Zafina players do delay it, because if it doesn't get delayed, you won't bait them into pressing. So, sidestepping ain't that bad of an option there. Okay. Uh, what else? So down forward one of the main moves of Zafina players that's very annoying. And the other one is 1 plus 2. Which is kind of similar with this mind game. But it's much scarier. So 1 plus 2. This is minus 12. Normally. Right? It's mid counter launcher. And will do a lot of damage. If you get counter to launch. And on hit it's not that much plus. But plus 4 is enough for a down 4 to want to check you. So it's enough plus for Zafina basically. So 1 plus 2. Of course if you block it you punish it. But now comes the problem of, it, of the strings. The 1 plus 2 4. So basically. If you do punish this. You'll get countered. Just like that. It doesn't seem like much there. But this 3 hit string makes this guaranteed into a combo. Like if you get countered by just this, it's not that big a deal. But the 3rd string is what makes it a big deal. She gets a combo from that. I think she picks up with this. Into that. Wait. Like that. There you go. Into whatever, right? So it's a combo with a lot of damage. And good Safina players will deal a lot of damage there. Like, at least 70. Minimum. So be very careful about that. The best way to deal with it is, of course, you, you still have to guess. You sometimes have to punish this. Because good Safina players will always just do this. Just for you to press into it. And do, when they see you pressing into it, they will finish it and get a counter launcher. But when you see this, of course, you punish it with a time frame, alright? I'm not too sure about uh, Katarina, but it should work and it should not whiff on this. Yup. It works. So you interrupt the jabs, either 1 2 or 1 1. So, yeah. Be very careful about that. But you can, can sidestep left to last hit as well. Yeah, you can sidestep left to last hit, but you generally don't want to let the Safina player get away with just this either. So that's why if your character can, you should always punish this with jabs. Always, always. If you want a high reward, of course you can, but you risk the situation of getting away, her getting away with just the second hit. Because if you sidestep left and they don't do the last hit, you don't get anything, right? But of course, Katarina can easily sidestep left. Most females can sidestep left into that and, you know, punish it. Check your jab connect. Yeah, I mean, we're playing uh, Katarina right now. Katarina's jab connects all the time. For example, I mean, Kazuya, Kazuya's jab almost never connects. Sometimes it does, but it almost never does. So it's not worth punishing, for example, right? So Kazuya versus uh, Zafina Speed Lab would look different. And for all my Kazuya players out there, I'll tell you here as well, j just in case. If, and um, for all the players that um, jab whiffs here, I, Miguel for example, right? Like this doesn't work. Your jab whiffs and you get hit by the last hit. And your sidestep doesn't work either, for some reason. Like Kazuya, Kazuya's sidestep doesn't work, you get flipped. You have to backdash this. It depends on your backdash, but Kazuya for example can backdash it. 
I think Kata in this backdash is a little bit worse than the average. But Kazuya can backdash this and launch it. Kata in a can't, Kata in a can sidestep it. But I already say best option is to jab check anyway. But for Kazuya players, you have to backdash and launch it. Simple back back backdash will make it with. I won't show it here because I'm loving Katarina right now, but for Kazuya players, and I don't know, maybe Miguel players can be helpful as well if they can't sidestep it. Backdash can work. Okay. That's basically how to deal with this, more or less. Like, if you do block it, you have to interrupt it with a jab every time it's Katarina. And you, this thing is, if you step left, which is the way you want to step down forward one, the second hit does whiff. Like that. Especially if you step block, this will just whiff in general. Like that. So it's not that bad. Because you want to go left against down forward one anyway. So be ready for that. But it's tracking is really good. Like this move's tracking is really, really good. It won't track on the right, but down forward one tracks there, so... You don't want to step to the right. You don't want down forward one hitting you for free. But just in case... It's good to know that this doesn't track to the right. And tracks to the left. Right? It's good to know. Okay. That's about 1 plus 2. One of the be this two strings are one of the best moves Athena has. So down forward one string, like all of this, and the one plus two string. It's very good. Now for the lows most Athena players use. So the most common law, of course, you see is down three. The other one is back one plus two, but I'll talk about back one plus two a little bit later. Let's talk about down three first. So down three. Of course, this is a 22 frame low. And uh, if you're sharp enough, you can react to it sometimes, but you won't be able to react to it all the time. So you have to be ready on a hit to know what to do. Of course, on block, it is minus 13, and uh, Katarina gets a wall staying 1-1. One, one. You can also wall staying 4, of course, but wall staying 1-1, one, one, better damage, and you get a stance mix up, right? So it's pretty good for Katarina there. It's not that bad, anyway. And I don't think it will ever whiff. Maybe in certain ranges. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think it will ever work. But yeah, always while staying 1-1. One, one. Down throw and zone is minus 15. Yeah, yeah, I know, but it's never... It's never good to launch it. Never, never. No one goes into Man... Not goes into Mantis. Everyone goes into Mantis here. Almost everyone, anyway. And even if they don't, you can't really turn apart just down three and down through Mantis. So always do a 13 frame Punisher. Always, always. You can't tell them apart. You may get lucky and they just don't do it, but... Just don't even risk it. Like, minus 15, you can launch it, but... Everyone goes into Mantis and you can't tell them apart, so just do the 30 frame Punisher. Okay, now let's talk about down 3 on hit. That was on block. Wait, before I go on hit... Down 3 can be stepped, but it's very hard to step. It can be stepped way easier on the right than to the left. It's the same with 1 plus 2. But down forward 1 is the thing that makes me, makes you stop going to the right. Because this has full tracking to the right. Right? Look at that. Full tracking. Normally you would uh, love to go to the right because so many things are swift. But down forward 1 really stops you. Yeah. Down 3 to 1 stank 4. Yeah, for example, that is done sometimes. This into this. And this stops any kind of movement. Or retaliation, you know, you can't press there. It's really good. But as I said, you don't want to risk it. You don't want to risk a launching a non-launch punishable low. Because if they go into Mantis, they can just block it. I messed up. I don't, I don't think it went to Mantis. There you go. Just take the minus 13. Okay, I'll I'm going to talk about this move a little bit later. This is also very common. But first, let's talk about down 3 and hit. So this is plus 4, and most of the players, if they expect a retaliation, they will use this move. This is a Mantis 2, and this is a Frame Trap. Only thing you can do here is a full crouch uh, Power Crush. Anna has one, but I don't know if anyone else has one. Most likely they do, but I don't remember. But yeah, you can Rage Art here to beat it, but anything else doesn't work. Even the Dick Jab, you'll get counter launched for it. And be careful when it comes to it. Because uh, you won't be able to step to the right, I think, if you're P2. 
But if you're P1, you can step it to the left just like this. But if you're P2, I think it tracks to the right. Yeah, it has full tracking there. You won't be able to step this. So not only is this a frame trap, it's also a movement trap as well, which stops you from moving. Of course, you can sidestep block, but that that's a different, different uh, story altogether. That's hard to do. So be very careful. If you're P1, sidestep left is very good here. And you get a free launch. But let's say you don't want to sidestep left, because, you know, Zafina has options to actually catch your sidestep left. One of them being this. This actually catches sidestep left pretty consistently. So down 3 into down 3. The Mantis down 3, I mean. And this also counterfeits a magic for it. Not counterfeits, but trades with it. Technically, it is a counter. A dick jab will beat it. But most of the time, if you sidestep, this will almost always hit you. And this has an extension as well. Down 3-1. So be very careful about this. When you are stepping, be make sure to also block. So down 3, down 3-1. Pretty common. If you try to step it, something like this may happen. And if you don't block, this will just launch you for free. Oh, and something like that may happen as well, but this that's pretty rare. The second hit with it. And most of the time, something like this will happen. So be very careful about that. Of course, sometimes low pairing can be a good option because of that. But just know your options, is what I'm saying. Because this can be low parried. You don't want to block it. This is safe. You do not want to block that. And um, this will hit you as a mid. This will hit you as a low. And the, the most common option also for a mid mix-up instead of doing just this is a 1-3 with that. Or just a 1. Mantis 1. So this into Mantis 1. This can also work as a frame trap. It's 13 frames. But it won't counter it launch you. And it's safe. But just like the other option, you can sidestep this to the left. So sidestep left is actually a very very decent option after down 3 on hit. It's not bad at all. A lot of things can hit you, like all of, most of the lows. And if they delay their option, it will be even, even more jarring. Because if they do down 3, delay into this, for example. Like this will still attract you, right? So yeah, be very careful about it. But now let's talk about this option in general, whenever they do this. So this is a string. 2, 1, I think 4? 2, 1, 4. There you go. Matt's 2, 1, 4. And each of the string is punishable, but you have to guess when the Zafina player will stop. But it's not a three-way guess. A lot of people think it's a three-way guess. It's a two-way guess. So basically, if you mash after this, this is minus 14, you can punish it, but only with mids. As you see, highs don't work. Like 2-2 two, two won't work. Wait, like 1-2 won't work. All that stuff. So you have to use a mid. I don't know what good uh, mid punisher Katarina has. Maybe down forward 1-1. One, one. That can work. But yeah, you have to use a mid punisher. And it's also very important to use a 13 frame one instead of 14 frame. And uh, I'll explain the reason why. Because this, this right here. This jails if they do it instantly. Right now I delayed it, right? I did a delay, it doesn't jail, and if I try to punish the first one, it actually becomes a three-way mix-up. But, if they don't delay it and just do a 2-1, like this. This actually jails, and if I just mash down for the 1-1, it'll work. Oh, 3, yeah, 3. Wait, why didn't that work? There we go. I forgot, that's 14. So even on the first one, if you mash, mash 3, it can work. It can work really, really well. I said to do a 13 frame Punisher because... Uh, right. This move sometimes becomes 13 a little bit more often than this one. Than this one. This move can become 13 as well. But this becomes 13 a little bit more often. But 3-3 three, three is an actual Punisher, and if they don't delay this, you'll be able to punish it and option select both of them. The problem is the last hit. The last hit, if they delay it or not delay it, doesn't matter. If you mash your punish, this will hit you as a counter hit. So, I see this, I'm mashing 3, and this will hit me as a counter hit. And this is the one that's minus 13. You, 
can't step this or do literally anything about this. You just have to guess it's coming and punish it with a 13 framer. Other two on 14, the last one's 13. The first two can also become 13 sometimes, but it's still better to do 3 3 and hit confirm it since you're playing Katarina. Because 3 3 can work really well there. It's a very good punisher. So, yeah, that's basically how the mind game of this string works. Just be careful if they delay this. Two, one delay, right? If they delay it, you won't be able to just mash three and punish both of them. But most of the players won't delay it. Okay. So that's about down three, more or less. The most common options if they don't go into stance to wall standing four. But they can also do wall standing one. Sometimes, right? Let's talk about wall standing one. So the very, very important thing about this string right here is because it can be used as a setup a lot of times. Like this setup is very common. So one plus two on block into top wall standing one, two. Oh god. Something like that. This is very common. And this works because you are delaying your punish like that. You see one plus two. You're expecting the follow-up, you're waiting, and then you're pressing. So this setup works because of that. So you have to know what to do against this in general. So the best thing you can do is very simple. The first hit is minus 10. You can actually punish this. And if you have a decent jab, you should be always be punishing it. If you don't have a decent jab, sometimes the punish whiffs. It's very weird. But if you have a decent jab, you can't you can punish it most of the time. Right? Just all of these work really, really well. And even if they finish it, like let's say they finish it. This is still a punish. Always a punish there. So you don't have to wait for the finisher. But of course, if you do wait, you can't step this. Either way, there's full tracking. Of course, you can't backdash it, it has very good range, but it is minus 13. So you get a little bit better punish than just a jab. But if they just finish that, if they just do this and don't finish it, you won't get anything. So punishing this with the 10 frame is very, very good. Just this. It's hard to do, especially if you delay it. Like, imagine you delay your jab, you get hit. You have to be very ready for this. But it's very good to do. Very, very good to do. Okay. That's about this string. It's very hard to sidestep because uh, most of the Zafina players use this as a setup. Even though it's steppable, you won't be able to step it most of the time. I'll just be honest there. So, if you do block it, make sure to punish the first one. Although, Katarina's 10 framer ain't the best, it's still, you know, it's still decent. Better than nothing. Okay, that's about this. What else? Uh, some good Zafina players also like using down back 3. Which I think is a very, very good low. Underrated Zafina low. But not a lot of Zafina players use it. But, it's very good. Because it's an 18 frame low, 13 damage, it's not that bad. And it's 0 on hit. So it's 0 on hit means Zafina can move around very freely. And whenever Zafina can move around freely, you know it's scary. Because Zafina's movement is that good. And of course, it's not only that. It can be plus 3 if she goes into stance. So be very careful when it comes to this low. Because like this, into stance 1, is a frame trap and you can't even power crush this, for example, right? Or even this is also a frame trap which is also a mid. You can power crush this one, but I, I don't know how worth it can be. Because something like this is also a thing. So be careful about down back 3 mind game, and in general, scarecrow mind game. Oh, since we're at Scarecrow, let's talk about Scarecrow mind game. Because that's very important. Especially in this situation. Right? Either on hit or on block. Doesn't matter. First, let's talk about the on hit situation. Then we'll talk about the on block situation. So, when you get punished, this is the 10 frame punisher of Zafina. You will get punished by this, you know, at least once a match. So you should, be, you should know what to do against this. So you get hit. It's minus 7. The most common Zafina options here is either this, which is a frame trap. So, plus 7, 17. This will trade with a jab. Bam bam, I jab, this will trade. Well, normally to trade if it didn't fucking 
crush. Like dick like a dick job will trade, I think. Yeah, there we go. So it's still a launcher with a million damage, right? So be very careful when it comes to pressing there. So this, very common. Now let's see what we can do about this. Backdash won't work because you're in too much minus. You don't have the frames to backdash. Even though the range on that move isn't the best, you don't have the frames to backdash here. Sidestepping to one direction does not work. It will actually track you very, very well. And sidestep the other direction is even worse. Because the move... Oh no, man. Has a very, very good tracking in this particular situation. When I say even worse, it's basically the same. I don't know why I said even worse. Basically the same. Back three is guaranteed here. So on hit, this is a very safe option that the players can do. And the only thing that beats it is a power crush. What's... What's got that in this power crush? I actually don't know her power question. When I played Katarina, I didn't use it even once. But yeah, power crush beats that. 4 through plus 4, ah, thank you. I just wanted to demonstrate that. There we go. Yep, a power crush beats that. But be very careful when it comes to using power crush in that situation. Because the other most common option is this one right here. And this works as a low mix-up. And there's an anti-power crush tool as well, on hit. So, let's see, I do a power crush, I get counter hit, right? And this is a counter hit launcher. You have to remember that. So this is anti-power crush, and a, a low mix-up for this, so it will force you to duck sometimes. So be very careful when it comes to it. So basically this, into that. On hit, of course. And it tracks really well, just like the OnePlus 2. Really, really well, because, you know, of course you're minus 7. That's very good range, you can backdash it, so no movement options. And backdash duck can work sometimes, but you risk getting hit by the 1 plus 2. But it is minus 14, so punish it with 1 staying 1. I was saying 1 1. I don't think it will ever whiff, right? Let me try to do a backdash. Yeah, I don't think it will ever whiff. 1 staying 1 1 is your go to punish her there. Okay, those are the most common options on hit. The uncommon options which can be can also be used is the wall staying 2, for example, which also stops the power crush. So wall staying 2-2. Two, two. So this is the wall staying 2-2, two, two, not wall standing. Why am I saying wall standing? Scarecrow. This will also stop a power crush and also act as a mid mix-up if you duck, right? And it's a safe mid-mid. It says minus 10, but most of the time you won't be able to jab punish this, just like that. So be very careful when it comes to it, right? The thing you can do about this, and it's very good to do, is if you block it, you can step the second hit. Like this. This is more or less consistent, but you have to step the right direction. You can't step to the left, it will track you. You have to step to the right. This is pretty consistent. If you step right, you can launch it. But you have to be ready for this move. Oh, and a very, very important thing is that whenever a Zafina player uses this, they are always in Scarecrow. They cannot get out of Scarecrow. Like, they don't have a button that gets out of Scarecrow after this. So basically, this Scarecrow mid is a mind game situation. You either mash or you sidestep. Of course, if you mash, it's gonna be scary. Wait. Because this will counter hit you, but it's not a launcher at least. So, you mash, this will happen. Back three is most likely guaranteed there, like 40 damage, right? Maybe something else is guaranteed, I don't remember. But, why is that a mind game situation? It's pretty simple. Because this move, just this move, if you block it, it's minus 7 for Zafina. And she can't block, because she's in Scarecrow. So that means, let, let's see we manually get out Scarecrow with down back, right? Like that. Whoa, I messed up. And try to block. How many frames do we have? That works. A 15 framer works there. If you mash a hop kick after just seeing that move, you'll be able to hop kick punish that move. If they don't finish it. They are forced in Scarecrow here. Of course anything else also works. But the very uh, the first thing you have to be aware of, be like very very wary of, is if she does the 1, 3 into 4, not 4. Bro, why am I talking about? This into this. This is the situation where your uh, 15 frame does not work. 
This is like exact 15 frame power crush. I think 14 would work here. Yep, 14 would work here. So you have to be very careful. Down 3 plus 4 to escape Scarecrow. Oh, this one right here. I don't know if uh, she has uh, enough frames here. Let's see. Let's see it. It still works. You still get, get a hit, basically. I mean, a hit's a hit, you know. Le less of a hit, but it still works. So I think doing 3-3 three, three here as Katarina is your best option. So in general, a 14 framer. You always down back one on that. Yeah, the thing is, you have the mind game situation. The mind game is very simple. You either mash into it or wait for this trig and sidestep it. And both of them was pretty bad for Zafina, but I don't see anyone mashing into just down two. Like, this is great, right? This is amazing. Katarina can very, very commonly step this. Oh, but it's consistent, basically. If, if they do just down two, not, uh, not down two, Scarecrow two, you can also mash into it, and it's not that scary. It will counter it you, of course, to guaranteed back three, but it's not a launcher, at least. So that's very good to know. Okay, now the threes. This is also uncommon, but people do use it. So one three into a three check, for example. This also stops power crushes. It's a frame trap. And you won't be able to press anything or step it. This is also a very good move. Scarecrow in general is a pretty scary stance. It's a very, very good stance for Zafina. And it has a lot of follow-up. So this mid-mid, there's a mid-high, and I think there's a mid-low. I don't know how to do the mid-low. I forgot. But yeah, it has a lot of follow-ups. So the, this... 3-3 is minus 9. It leaves them in Scarecrow. Of course, we all know what leaving in Scarecrow means. That means the mind game situation. Very, very basic. Down 3-3. Oh, gotcha. Oh, it's a low-low, not mid-low. So it's, it can basically be a mix-up. So the low has a low low and the low high. So this is basically the strings on it. Of course you have to know the strings. But uh, I'll show you how to deal with them, basically. Especially this one. So this mid mid has a third option as well. But it's a mind game situation. So this... Leaves her at Scarecrow. And I don't think she has an option to get out of Scarecrow with like a back or something like that. Just leaves her at Scarecrow. So if you block it, it's basically minus 9. Mind game situation. And she's left in Scarecrow without being able to cancel it. And most of the time, Hopkick will hit. Unless they do some shenanigans to avoid some damage, right? They can also do that. But the mind game situation comes with the third hit. This one. So this, this, if you try a Hopkick here... Something like this will happen. I think a good hop kick may not may work. Maybe Claudio hop kick can work. But this is very weird, right? It looks silly. Of course, it's not as bad as you're getting counter hit, but it looks very silly. Yeah, I can't have four three. It's almost like Claudio may be able to hop kick this, but that happens. Does an orbital hit that? I think an orbital's low crushing starts way too late for that. I'm not too sure. But if you orbital, I don't think it'll count as a punisher for the 3 3. That's why if you have a good hopping, it can work. So the thing is, this, of course, you can duck it, and it's launch punishable. Right? So it's very important to duck. It's minus 25. So just be aware of the string. Uh, could Brian do that? I'm not sure. I gotta be honest. I haven't tested out all the characters with this string. I tested out only some. So I'm not sure if Brian's orbital can work. So yeah, that's very important to know about 3 3. For down, minus 14. Oh yeah, that. I almost forgot, dude. I almost forgot about that. Thank you. Karim, thank you. Thank you for that. I can't believe I forgot about that. I said it was launch, but it's it's only launch if they don't go into stats. Can't believe I forgot about that. It becomes minus 14. So that's not a punish anymore. 
It's a female man, sometimes even I forget. Here to improve knowledge? Exactly, exactly. But yeah, it's minus 14. So I think low pairing is the right option here, because you can't really guess if they go into Mantis or not. It's just like down three. It's very weird. But yeah, you either low parry it. I mean, if you had a good hop kick, it would be a very good option to select, but that time I can't really do it. And let's see the other options now. So mid, mid, we already discussed this, and there's a stance here. There's a mid high. God oh, damn it, what I messed up. Mid high like this. Which of course you can duck and launch. But be careful when it gets blocked. If you do block it, you're in minus. This is very, very important. Very, very important. When you block it, which you sometimes will block it because you don't want to duck the mid mid, right? You might get hit by it. Be careful of pressing anything. Very, very careful. It's minus three for you. So that means something like this, not this. This will check you. Something like this will also check you. This will trade with jabs. So this into this is a frame trap. This and this again. Right? Let's say you block this, you try it down 4 to 1. I messed up. This That will trap you. I wasn't fast enough. There you go. Maybe that will work. God damn it. Yeah, it's hard to replicate because it's a st stance move on block as an AI. I'm gonna try it. Wait. Maybe that will work. There we go. Oh, that was harder than I thought. So yeah, th this is a frame trap. And to only trade with jabs. And you know, down jabs. A power crush will work there. And power crush isn't that bad of an option. But be careful of lows. If they do decide to do a low, most likely it will counter it you. Okay. And uh, yeah, be careful of the low as well. Of course, this can be considered a mix up. Even though this is uh, faster, this is slower. It's still not a uh, seeable, right? 18 is definitely not seeable. And uh, be careful when it comes to down 3. There's a down 3 high, like this one. And most of the time, you do want to duck after it. Because there is no mid option. So if you get hit by it, you can duck the high. Just like that. Launch it. And it's the same with the down 3-3. Three, three. You can get hit by it and duck the second one. And uh, I think you can launch it. I'm not sure. She is forced in stance here, but I'm not sure if Power Crush will beat that. 8 frames, right? It should not beat it. Beat it. Wait. It should not. When I calculate the frames to chant, it should not beat it. This is the Power Crush. If you have a 15 frame launcher, of course. Yep, it does not beat it. This Power Crush starts 8 frames. If you have a 16 frame launcher, it won't. It won't work. That will trade and you'll get launched. Okay, but I'm not sure if she can actually cancel it faster than that, like cancel the Scarecrow. That's the one thing I'm not sure of. So something like this into Scarecrow cancel, maybe. I'm not sure if that will work. But most of the time, the wall tank tier should work more or less. I might be wrong about this, because the Fina players might know a way to cancel Scarecrow there a little bit faster than normal. I don't, I'm not a Fina player. But if you guys find out about that, at least you'll know what your options are. Maybe you can do something faster instead of 15 framer. Okay, that's about this string. This and this. Okay. Only quick escape is uh, down to plus 4. This one. Ah, oh, gotcha. So it will still work, basically. At least it can whiff sometimes, but even if it whiffs, you won't get punished for it. So let's check out this situation, right? Which is very uncommon, I don't see anyone doing this. Yeah, you'll still get a hit, basically. Something's better than nothing. But I don't see anyone doing this. No, no Zafina player will do this. No way, I don't believe it. I will not believe that. But yeah, be careful about that. That string in general. And the Scarecrow. But yeah, let's talk about 1-3 on block, because this is also very, very common. So 1-3 on block into Scarecrow is minus 2. And of course you can check her with like a jab or something. Do you know, stop anything. But this is actually very, very risky. Just something like this existing. And this move 
crushes jabs very often. That's why you don't want to do this. Right? So this beats that. And something like an instant high crush will also, also beat it. And you also don't want to down forward one. Let's say you... You say you think like, oh, this this will high crush. Let's just do down forward one checks. It's the same problem here because of this power crush. If you do a down forward one check, this will work, right? So the best option here is if you do a generic low, like a down forward if you have one. Thankfully, Katarina does have one, but uh, this also has a problem of its own, right? It's a very, it's a mind game situation. It's a very strong. The si problem here is. Safina can go to 1-3 without the stance cancel. If they just notice you doing down 4 all the time, you're gonna get punished for it. This into low parry can work very well. It's pretty common. That's the big issue about down 4. But if you force the uh, Zafina player to do this, it's not that bad. So down 4 is one of your best options, but you can also play the guessing game, especially if they like doing this. If you play the guessing game and guess right, you can launch punish this. Right? Or just sidestep one direction. Don't just guess, always sidestep. Very big brain scarecrow city plus four. Oh <laughs> this one? Yeah, this also beats lows. It's not the that big a deal as low parry, but that's also beats lows, yeah. But it's not not that good of an option because you know everything everything else checks them. It's better to do a low pair. But I guess they can do that. Yeah, I've, ne I've never seen this. Well, I've never seen it. And this is punishable as well. That's why it's not that good. And most good Zephyr players will cancel into a low pair. Yeah, there's a reason reason we've never seen it. That that was not that good. But yeah, when you get when you block this, one of the best options is either you do a down four check or sidestep and see what the Zafina player does. The sidestep block can be really good. Or just a backdash. Whatever you do when it comes to these situations, don't just stand there. Either do a backdash or step. If you want to block like and play as safe as possible, do a backdash. If you want to take risks, make something avoid and punish them, do a step. Most of the time, stepping right is very good against Scarecrow. But some some things can also track there. So something like wait, this can track to the left, right? But stepping right, way better. But something like this, I think, will track a little bit better to the right. Yep, and it will track worse on the left. But I think it tracks either way, bruh. That move, man. It does less tracking to the left, but I think it still hits you. Okay. But yeah, if you want to step Scarecrow, most of the time you have to step step it to the right. That's the better way to step it anyway. Even though normally you step Zafina to the left, because of this. Even though sidestep right is very good, by the way. Sidestep right is amazing for this and down three. But that, this will track you. But Scarecrow, you sidestep to the right. And you also step uh, Mantis to the left. As I already mentioned, after down three, something like this and something like this will whiff if you step to the left. On if you're P2, too bad, you can't step there, but if you're P1, it's pretty good. Okay. I wasn't talking about Scarecrow, right? I think I covered Scarecrow more or less. More or less. Of course they can do a lot of Scarecrow options that I already mentioned, even on block. Like they can do this even on block. Not only on hit. But if you do a backdash, which is very good to do, you can make this way. Oh, be careful about the uh, sidestepping though. If you sidestep to the right, this will catch you. I said to sidestep the sidestep uh, scarecrow to the right. But this is one of the options that will catch you. So be very careful. That's why backdash is one of the best options you can do here. Of course the low will catch you there, but if you backdash and duck, even that low won't catch you. If you do it correctly anyway. But I think this might catch you if you backdash duck too, like, uh, too fast. Oh, wait, wait, bad situation. I almost forgot. Blocking this after a backdash. Oh, it doesn't whiff. Sometimes some of the Punishers whiff. It's very weird. But yeah, Katarnas doesn't whiff. 
I just had to check that. I almost forgot about that situation. Some Punishers can do if there. It depends on the Punisher, but... Yeah. Since we're live with Katarina, Katarina can just save the topic that. Okay. Uh, what else? I talked about Mantis more or less. I guess let's talk about the third stance, right? This is the most um, uncommon stance you'll see. This one. Most of the time they will transition to that stance with this move right here. This one. This is the most common transition to that stance. I don't know what 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 is this stance called? Cockroach? I don't remember. <laughs> but yeah, this into this. This is the most common transition from it. So if you see this, this might stop you. Tarantula? <laughs> I don't know, man. That, that, that looks like a cockroach to me. But yeah, if they want to stop you from stepping, they might use this as well after down 3. And if they do do this, you have to know how to deal with it. First, how to deal with just this if you block it. The thing is, this is punishable. But you have to know what to punish it with. So this is very very low to the ground. So a lot of highs, not a lot of the, all of the highs will whiff. Some mids will whiff as well. So you have to have an option in mind to punish this. But the option also has to be fast enough. I think this is their fastest option. And it comes out in 19 in that situation. So something like this, this, and this. Right? That. That comes out in 19. So whatever option you choose has to be faster than 19 frames. And it has to hit her. So, I don't know. I think something like down forward 4 will whiff. Not whiff, but... I forgot. Like, it has to be faster than 19 frames, because that will hit you, but it has to also hit him if they don't do that, is what I mean. Right there, I made the mistake, I didn't have to do anything. I just have to check if something whiffs. Yeah, for example, right, that whiffs. Down forward 1 hits. 3? And that whiffs as well, damn. Was a good mid here for Katarina? I don't know. Even half kick whiffs. My goodness. But yeah, I have to find a good mid. Down forward one is decent to check, but it's not that much of a reward. At least it works. Down forward one is decent. Back four? Oh, there we go. Back four. Does that work? That can be sick. I think it doesn't work because uh, she's sta staying on the ground. Wait, I think I made a mistake there. It will be a different kind of hit. That won't. That won't be the case in the real match. Have to stay down a little bit like that. Yeah, I think that's what's gonna happen. It works though. Damn, that works. Okay. But yeah, Katarina players out there. Since I'm not Katarina player, you have to find a good option there. I already showed you two, which is down forward one and back four. Both work more or less in that situation. So those are those are decent. The back four through plus four especially looks good. I don't know. It doesn't look bad. But let's talk about the situation when you're like this and you're in minus. For so you get hit by this basically. And you're in this situation. Minus 13, of course you don't want to press anything. You most likely can't move. So let's see what you do. First is this move. So this move they can use as a mid mix up. But this makes the same kind of situation as the previous one. You have to check him. Something like a down forward one will work here as well, most likely. Yep. Maybe back forward will work. Yep. The same kind of situation here. Yeah, that won't happen. The back forward um, standing kit. Now it won't happen in the real match. Most likely they'll mash after this. Like, do this into that. Wait. What will happen mo most likely in the match is do this into another this. They'll do this. And you'll try to check him. Maybe something like this. Right? And this will happen. That's why this seems decent. It's not that bad. Or down forward one. Most likely this will happen. So you have to check him after this on block. Do not let uh, Zafina player get away with this because they can just, you know, mix you up after this for no reason. It's not a mix up. Not at all. Okay, now let's discuss this move. After you block this, of course, it's minus 11. It's not that big a deal. You only get the wall staying 4 Punisher. But you can step it, but as I said, most of the time when you're in this situation, you won't be able to step. 
and be very very careful when it comes to polishing this move as well as i said it crushes a lot of stuff okay so this is a very common low this is a very common mid but this is also a very common low as well not this one I have to remember the input this one there you go it is slow but because of the animation it's hard to see it's not that seeable even though it's 25 frames you can see it, of course, I'm not saying you can't. It is reactable, but it's very hard to react to because of the animation. So you, this happens, you of course launch it, but if you get hit by it, something is guaranteed. Something like this or some other stuff is guaranteed there, so be very careful about that. And the biggest thing you have to be careful of when it comes to reacting to that move is uh, this right here. This move kind of exists as a counter reaction i don't know how to explain it like if the zafina player sees you're reacting to this not that the fuck is that this they might do this and if you duck it as a reaction and you think the low is coming right like this is the right way to react to that and then get up like react to the low and then get up because it does look very similar right it looks very very similar but if you don't get up you get hit it's a safe mid as well. So this, this move. This is safe. It's minus 9. Of course, that's a lot of weaknesses being that slow. You can step it and everything. But as I said, most of the time, stepping isn't the best option against this stance. Okay. Now let's talk about this move right here. 1 plus 2. This can also be used, even though it's not that common. So this 1 plus 2 is like a mid mix-up as well. But it's not that good because it's punishable. It's like straight up minus 12, you can punish it. And then the other uncommon move, which is this one. Scarecrow, not Scarecrow, Tarantula 4-1. So this is also punishable, just like the one string she has. It's very similar to it. I don't remember the string, but yeah. It's minus 13. 2-2. Two, two. I think that's it about Tarantula, at least in common moves, more or less. Why else? But the rage situation I'll um, I'll do for last. Like before rage. Of course there are a lot of mind games like after this, Scarecrow, for example, right? But this is a very similar situation to 1-3 Scarecrow. You can of course down four check it. Down forward one check won't still won't work because Power Crush will beat it. A lot of mind games there. But since you know Scarecrow situation, you'll know how to deal with the mind, this mind game as well. Basically a Scarecrow mind game. Why else? I talked about 1 plus 2 and down 4 to 1, which is like the most important ones, right? Hmm. Back 3? Yeah, back 3. I mean, that's just uh, about you knowing, right? This is mind snipe and block. And if it goes into stance, how do you go into stance here? Three plus four, maybe. Down back. Okay. You have to be careful of uh, checking this in general. I think you're forced crouch anyway. What high can you do here? I guess if you do have a high, it's a little bit iffy. But one second four check can work really well. One second one check can work well. But I think just be careful about the range. You mean on hit? Oh yeah, on hit as well. Yeah, yeah. I almost forgot the on hit property. So this on hit... I think it's minus 4 at its best because of this. But while staying 4 check is a little bit iffy here. I don't know. I don't really like checking this move because Zafina can just backdash out of everything or sidestep everything. Even though it's minus 5 for Zafina, it really doesn't mean much. Like if you get hit by this, you don't want Mustang 4. So if you're gonna easily evade it and just punish you for it, it's a little bit iffy. I mean, if they mash after back 3 on hit, if the Zafina player mashes, of course you can check him, but other than that, it's pretty risky. Okay. Oh, I forgot about the snake edge. Yeah, she has a snake edge from here, but it's not that big a deal. Have to react to this.
Damn, it actually becomes minus four if they go into Mantis. I think Rage situation is all that's left. Oh, and that move. This move. Almost forgot. So this move is a one of the best low checks Safina has because of its infinite range. It's very annoying to deal with. But one of the most important things about this move is that you don't have to respect it. It is plus two for you. A lot of Zafina players like to press after it, like down forward one for example, or jabs and stuff like that, to continue their pressure. But thing is, you can't check this. Of course it's risky, if the Zafina players decides to move after this, they can make everything whiff. But if they pressure you, it's very good to check after it. So be very very careful. Like a fort fort four staple. Yeah, this and this. And of course if you check, you will like make this whiff, right? And do whatever. Not whiff, float. So be sure to sometimes check it, don't always respect it. But of course be careful because of the fitness movement, every every button you press can can whiff and can be punished. Basically everything. Something like, I don't know, this can happen. I don't know if that will work. Yeah, of course it will work. So be very careful. But, of course, Zephyr player takes a lot of risk when doing that, because it's minus 17, it's launch punishable. When you block it, always launch it. And you can also sidestep it, but sidestepping is a little bit iffy. Yeah. Did I do lay it? Uh, a lay speed lap should be up on YouTube. It was a long time ago, but it should be up. So that's more or less about this. Just be very careful when on hit and on block, of course, you launch it. Oh, forward, forward, four. I forgot to talk about it. Forward, forward, three. Bruh, there's so much to talk about with this character. Such a good character. But yeah, forward, forward, four. Very, very good check tool in the neutral and it's usually used in this kind of range, right? When it's like you think Zafina won't be able to reach you, but then she does this and she will hit you. So tracking mid, which is minus eight, it's safe. Normal hit knockdown, means normal hit wall splat, right? All this shit. Very, very good move. And, the, I think, which is the most annoying part about this move, is it, it can't be counter hit. Like, down forward towards the counter launcher, right? But because she's in the air, you can't counter hit her. Of course you can float. It's got Aina, right? But as a Kazuya player, if I down forward 2, I will get literally nothing. So this is the most... Most annoying part about this move, in my opinion. As a Kazuya player, I can't down forward 2. Very annoying. But one of the th few things that I do, if I expect this, is do random jabs. Well, they're not random, right? Because I expect them. I do jab checks like this. Because jabs are more or less safe on whiff. If you do get the correct jab timing, you do get a, this, right? Into a float combo. So it's not that bad. Sometimes I do that against forward forward four, and it's the same with forward forward three plus four. If you get a jab in that kind of ranges, if you expect that can happen, you get a float combo, right? All that shit, the good stuff. But just be careful, it can still hit you. Bum bum. Fuck, messed up. That doesn't work. Had to do a 4. Yeah, jabbing sometimes is good. But let's see about the situation. Of course, on hit, you just get up. Most likely there's gonna be another mix up, more or less. Or she's gonna pressure you more. But on block, now this is the funny part. Not the funny part, the fun part. On block. Because of the little pushback she has, even though it's minus 8, it's very risky to press something. Because something as simple as a backdash, like that, will make everything whiff. Well, as long as it's fast, it won't whiff, and it has good range, like, that the match core has decent range and it's fast, right? But something like a down forward 1 will whiff here, if they backdash correctly. Right now I fucked up the backdash, I think. So a simple backdash will make things whiff. Sidesteps can make this make things whiff as well. It depends. Like, Safina's movement is that good. Right? It, the pushback is most likely gonna be pretty far. Because you're gonna be backdashing in the neutral. So a lot of things can whiff. 
So be very careful. And so I've seen this a lot as well. This into a hop kick. Some Safina players really like doing this because of one simple reason. When you see this pushback, players are usually tempted to go forward and then press a button. And when you do it, hop, it just hits you in your face. That's why this works. So checking with a long range mid can work. I don't know, what's a long range if it's Katarina has? I think she has a 12 frame long range mid, right? Back three, there we go. So I'm going to get back three check and work really well here for Katarina. Uh, of course, if you expect a button, you can also down forward four check, you know, for a free, free combo. Down forward four check in general is good because it also checks uh, power crushes and rage arts here. But as I said, be very careful of pressing stuff like that. Because if they do ju do just a back dash, which if I do it correctly, fuck. It's hard to do correctly because you have to make it block and then back dash. There you go. It can whiff in some situations. God damn, st I'm still not doing it correctly. But yeah, it can whiff. Or a sidestep can make it whiff as well. Be very careful about doing that. It depends on how this gets blocked. So there's it's basically a mind game situation. But if you do something fast like a jab, maybe it can work. But even jabs can whiff because of the pushback. Right? Look at that. So be very careful. Just so you know the situation after 444, it's very very weird. Now let's talk about 443 plus 4. So 443 plus 4 normally is a very good checking tool in mid range. It basically does the same thing as 444. It's a little bit slower, but the thing is, unlike 444, this can be stepped. But stepping Zafina in this range is a little bit iffy because of 444. And this does more damage, a little bit more damage. But it's minus 11. But the... I said but like twice there. But yeah. It's minus 11 unless they go into stance. So it's minus 11. You can actually jab check it. Unless it whiffs like that. Some people can jab check it. Like Azure can back one to this sometimes, right? But it's still not punishable. Most of the time, even though it's minus 11. And she can go into a stance. Which is a mantis. And when she goes into the stance... It's minus 12, but it's high crushing. But something like back 3 will punish this. So for Gut Arena, normally you don't have a punish, and you should usually go for a mind game situation instead of for a punishment. But back 3 can punish the Mantis transition. The second hit magically hits. Yeah, true, true. The second hit can magically hit. It has a very weird tracking, especially in long range. So if you're backdashing a lot, let's see, that this range. The second hit can't hit. I don't know how to replicate it. Yeah, I have no clue how to replicate it, but it can't hit, basically. It's very weird. It has very weird tracking. But yeah, be very careful when it comes to punishing this, and usually go for a mind game situation, or some kind of mix-up, instead of a punishment with Katarina. Some characters can go for a punishment mind game, if their 10 framer works or if their 11 framer works. And you either punish with 11 framer or a. Um, what's it called? A 12 framer? But yes, Katarina can't do that. But I think the Dick Jab won't work here either. Yeah, Dick Jab also lifts. I've tested this before. I tried if a Dick Jab was an option select because, you know, it's like a 10 frame kind of mid, but it also lifts. Unless your Dick Jab has a lot of range. Okay. It's about this. 444 I already talked about. Down 3 talked about. Oh yeah, 443. Almost forgot. I even mentioned it before too. Almost forgot. So yeah, 443. This is one of uh, Zafina's best mids to use in general. This works as a mix-up as this in a way. If you don't react to this correctly, you may get hit by this. So it works really well. 443. Let's see the properties first. So it is plus on block. Of course, it's plus on hit. It forces crouch when it's only on hit, but it doesn't force crouch on block, like this. And on counter hit, it's a launcher, which does pretty good damage. 
It's a very good move, but can't be stepped. When you step to the left, it can have a little bit of tracking because it's forward forward. And it's the same way to step to the right, but it can be stepped. But because of forward forward, the tracking can be way better than you would think it is. But it can be stepped both sides, more or less. But be careful about stepping it, as I already said. This can really, really track you. Now let's talk about the block situation. So block instantly goes to Scarecrow, like that. Or she has the option to not go to Scarecrow by holding back. It's always plus four. But now, this is a very, very complicated situation because of that. You are minus four, but you don't know if she's in Scarecrow or not. So this is a little bit of a complicated situation. So you have to kinda notice if the Zafina player likes going in Scarecrow after 443, or they don't like to do it. If they like to do it, your options are a little bit different than if they do it. Because we already talked about the Scarecrow mix, right? Something like 2-2, for example, or 1 plus 3. If they do like to go to Scarecrow, this is one of the most common options after 443, which, you know, is very good. You can't step it, you can't backdash it, and if you do something too slow, you'll get countered. Although you can interrupt it with a jab, right? One, two, stuff like that. Or even a magic four. If you magic four here, this will counter it. Because it's not as much plus as one, three on hit. But then they have options like 2-2, two, two, just a jab, or 3, which will, you know, work as a frame trap. But this is not as common, but it's pretty good. This will just check you all the time. You, no power crush or anything will save you. This, this 3 will check any jab attempt. You won't be able to jab this. I just did it incorrectly. Let me mash. Mash, mash, mash. There we go. Like, you won't be able to jab this, this will hit you, and if you're, especially if you're at the wall, this will all splat you. So be very careful about that. So this, and you're at the wall, this can happen. You're trying to jab. Okay, I messed up the timing, but this will happen, basically. You get counter it into a wall splat, into this, into a, this combo, right? That's a combo, right? Yep, all combo. So be very, very careful. When it comes to pressing after that. Although if you do a power crush after this and they go to a scarecrow. They don't have that many options to do. Which are mids. If they go into scarecrow. That means. That is. So something like this into this. We'll get beaten by a power crush. This will work. This into 2-2. Two, two, which is a frame trap for like jabs. If you do power crush this will also beat it. Same with the rage art. Although I don't know how worth it that is. That's a lot of damage. Like, I got dealt a lot more damage than I dealt. 4 4 3 one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That as well. Let's talk about that a little bit later. First, let's see the options after these. So, these are the options. Power Curse beats the mids. But if they decide to do a low, just like the other Scarecrow situations, if you Power Crush, this will counter the launcher. This will launch you. So, be very careful. And especially if they don't go into Scarecrow. The most common option is the down forward one. Which, if you do decide to power crush, she will be able to block it. Right now, she didn't block it because I didn't hold back. Wait. There we go. There we go. So, unless your power crush is fast, she, she will be able to block it in that situation, the down forward one. And this down forward one is very, very good. They can also 3 plus 4, not 3 plus 4, 1 plus 2, which can be beaten by 11 framers and 10 framers, but it's still a pretty good move to do in that situation. Because, you know, it has a mind game on block as well. But be very careful and notice if they like to go to normal, neutral, or in Scarecrow after 4 4 3. And if the Zafina player is good, they'll mix it up. So, yeah, be careful about that. And yeah, 4 4 3 one just like Harm said, this is a string. And this is mostly used to catch you off guard when you're about to die. Like, most of the Fina players won't use this unless you're gonna die from it. Most of them. So something like this will be used 
at the wall, because it's also wall splats. So, what to do about this? 4, 4, 3, 1. So this is not an actual combo, so make sure to hold back. And it's launch punishable, so something like a hop kick will be able to punish this. I think all the time. I don't think this will ever whiff. Some punishes can whiff. Never mind, can whiff. But yeah, most of the time this can... This can work. But make sure to not neutral block this. If you block this and ho don't hold back, you're gonna get hit. Right? That's a hit. I just let go of back. I got hit. So be very careful. You can't sidestep it either direction. You can't really do anything about it, but just block it and punish it. And especially in low life situations when you have a little bit low life. If you're at the wall, it's like, I don't know, 30% health because that's how much damage it will deal to you if it wall splats you. So something like this into this, right? This will deal a lot of damage, so be very careful. How many times people say you were blocking after this move? In general, people think neutral blocking blocks everything. Which is not the case. I don't know why people think that. It's so weird. You have to hold back. Just hold back. It's the same with like Asuka Kankans. They get hit by it for no reason. Is neutral block good even? The only good thing it might have is sometimes you are closer for punishments, but other than that, maybe not. I don't know anything other than that. Rage Drive. Yeah, I think that's the only thing left. Rage Drive. Okay, let's go with Rage. Dude, the Rage, rage Drive situation is such so cancer with Zafina, man. The very good Zafina plays, even they do this. It's so cancer. But yeah, when uh, the final player has Rage Drive, you have to be scared for your life for this, right? You have to be scared for your life. And even on block, it's very good. Before we talk about the neutral situation, let's talk about the block situation. Let's say you blocked it. Of course, you get hit by it. Rest in peace, you just lost. But yeah, let's see. say you blocked it. So it's minus 19. A lot of minus. Do it again. There you go. And the, one of the most common options, which, you know, most of the players can do after this, is instant snake edge. How do you snake edge? There you go. Not this one. There you go. It's very, very common. A lot of the Fino players love doing this. Instant snake edge. Of course, it's reactable, and most good players will react to it, but they still like doing that, and they mixed up with this. This is one of the most common options I've seen. But against good players, they won't do it as much. If they think the opponent is going to react to it, they won't do it, but... Just be ready for it, because it, it is an option they do go for. But other than that, they'll just instantly mix you up with either port 4 3, maybe down back 3, maybe down 3, stuff like that. Basically, expect an instant mix up after that, because you can't really move, press, or do anything there. Just hold back and guess. And uh, if you don't duck, the low options aren't that scary. I mean, Zafina's low options aren't that scary anyway, unless I don't know. They do this, right? Which I already talked about. Or jump over <laughs> in minus 90. And now let's talk about the neutral situation. Which is the most cancer situation. Because in the neutral, because she has this, you don't want to duck, right? You literally do not want to ever duck because of that. What does the Zafina player do when they realize, oh, my op opponent does not want to duck? They spam this. Very good Zafina players also do this. They literally do this, sidestep, do this, sidestep, and then do this. This is literally what happens. And this works really well. Because this, if they sidestep, everything whiffs. If they do this, this will punish it. And if you, you know, backdash, they'll just come a little bit closer and just mix you up with that. So this and this is a mix-up. Of course, it's a high-risk mix-up for Zafina. But it's also high risk for you, because if you duck and get hit by this, you kind of lost the game. It's very annoying. This and this. So they can do this, sidestep, rage drive. So common. So common. So be very careful, this is very annoying to deal with. You just have to expect it though. If you're not expecting it and you just rage press, 
like press and while staying four here, for example, you're gonna get stabbed in the rage, right? Or if you don't press anything, they might step into this again and this again, unless they think you're gonna duck and then do this. You block it, of course, and then you're still on a mix up. So it's very, very strong, very annoying situation. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it, though, more or less. More or less. There's a lot of setups and stuff for Zafina as well. Like... How's the 14 frame Punisher? I forgot. There you go. Like, after this... They have some setups to catch you backrolling. If you backroll, I think that will catch you. There are a lot of setups like that. But that's like the knowledge checks that you have to know anyway. So be very, very careful. Most of the time, it's better to let the Zafina player get a hit than you standing up. Oh, 1 plus 2 is back hole catch? Yeah, something like that. So, be very, very careful when it comes to those kind of setups. I won't be able to tell you all of them, as I said, I'm not a Zafina player. But this is one of them, for example, they can back hole catch after that. After some combos as well, just like Siren said. After down 3 combo, for example. So, I think this one, right? After this, they can also do some fancy stuff to catch you back rolling, and most of the time it's better to roll on the ground against the Fina. Oh, I almost forgot, holy fuck, how did I forget this move? Holy shit, Karim, thank you man, I almost ended the, ended the session without down back too. My goodness. This move, so yeah, let's talk about this move, and we'll, we'll end, end the speed lap session there. So down back to this one of the best mids. Zafina has. It used to be better. I think this used to be 12. If I remember correctly. Which is very dumb. But yeah, this move. It's a mid. Minus 9. Decent range. You won't be able to backdash it most of the time. Sometimes you can. But most of the time you won't be able to backdash it. It has very good range. And it tracks really well to both directions. You can still step it, especially if you're playing a female character. But it does track really well. As you can see, if I do try to sidestep it, why is Zafina just standing there? Do the damn jab. Bro. So you won't be able to sidewalk it even to the right, but if you sidewalk it to the left, sometimes you can walk it. But most characters with the average sights that won't be able to walk it as well. So be very careful when it comes to stepping this. And this also has a counter it, which is that. And this is one of those catches I was talking about. I think that, right? I messed it up. Something like that. Let me try to do it and do a back roll. God damn it. I'll try that. Let's see. Nah, I messed up. But yeah, there's a back roll catch here. I don't know exactly how it works, but there's a back roll catch here. Maybe 1 plus 2 will work. I have to get like this into 1 plus 2. If you back roll, that might work. Oh, while standing too. Yeah, that can work. So be very careful when it comes to that. She gets something guaranteed anyway there. I think she gets back 3 guaranteed all the time if they dash into it. But I'm not quite sure. But this is like 100% guaranteed. Back 1 plus 2. Oh, down to is guaranteed. Okay. But yeah, this move is very good. Yeah, down to, there you go. But yeah, there's the back roll catch situation too, so be very, very careful when it comes to it. But this move is one of the best moves she has. But be aware that on hit, it's not as bad as a lot of people think. It is plus three, they can down for the one and check you after it. But plus three. So your minus 3, it's not that big a deal. Sometimes maybe press, sometimes move. It's not that big a deal. I think this into down forward 1 can't be stepped. Yep. Because it also pushes you to the left. Yeah, minus 3. Oh, and one more thing that's not a big deal is this on hit. A lot of people respect this on hit, right? Because of the last hit. But if you see them stopping here, you can mash out of it. It's only minus one. Like, in Magic 4, will actually counter hit a down forward one attempt. So, if they do this, down forward one, 
I've got that does a magic four. This will counter it. So don't respect that either too much. I think that's it. Right? That was long. How long was that? Like an hour, 20 minutes? That was pretty long. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that was it, more or less. I didn't talk about everything. Of course, I can't talk about everything, but... It was good enough. At least, I hope it was good enough. Yeah. I'll see you guys later in the next video.